Oh, yeah, J Press coming at you live and in the living color. Giving them the business with the homie Chris Gotti and Don De Niro. Live and in the living color. Let's go. Yeah, we're back. You know what I'm saying? I want to first give everyone a big shout out for liking, subscribing, sharing, giving them the business we had. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep supplying you with dope interviews, dope uh, people that come on and great information. It's me, Chris Gotti Renzo, my partner, Don De Niro. Que will lie, Mr. Money for the Dingo. Que will lie. You know how we do it. This is black and brown things. You know what I'm saying? And today we have an extremely, extremely special guest today, man. I'm so happy I caught him. You know what I'm saying? We came to a, uh, a little private location, you know what I mean, to get this interview, and I appreciate I want to introduce James J. Prince. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I, yeah. What's up, New York? Yeah. That's you give them the business today. Ooh, wait. Ooh. Yeah, that's what I'm telling them about. You know, I, again, you know, we have a great relationship. I just kind of want to just thank you again personally for pulling up on last last minute notice on some real nigga shit you know how we do it and again i caught you and you know we got some big fights in coming in if y'all don't know jay prince is is a fight it, uh, man um this guy when you get into your boxing business that to me is actually how we actually built our relationship because you told me to go get curtis stevens if you remember that you were signing you wanted to sign curtis and then you said, man, I got Andre Ward. I'm good. Same weight division. You should sign Curtis, which I did. People don't know that, but that's actually how I got into boxing when I started. It's because of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what started me and everything. But let's go back to the essence. I want to start right back to the beginning with you. I want to go back to rap a lot days because you know what we do with Adventure Music? We try to empower independent artists so they know how to own, operate, and monetize their business. That's exactly what you did yeah. from Houston. Yeah. What's that? Which wall? Fifth that? wall. I know. Fifth wall. I know. Fifth wall. <laughs> yeah. Five one hundred four one for the four one. That's how dice talk. But you know what I'm saying? The fifth wall coming right out of fifth wall with all of this music being very scarce. Let's like you talking about an era where hip hop was very scarce. It was so hard to penetrate. How did you? formulate a plan to actually execute to get that to actually come about from Houston, from out of Fifth Wall. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a long story, but uh, let me try to explain that uh, as short as I possibly can. Uh, of course, you know, you all being from New York, yeah, y'all know this is where all the smoke and everything was taking place. You know, you can walk down in Manhattan and different things, maybe see CBS or yeah. Columbia, you know, all the big major record labels. You know, a lot of the, the people at Def Jam had access to to the power, you know. And right. Even on the West Coast, they had access to power of those big buildings and those majors, the existence of those majors. Right. Down in the South, we had no such thing. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it was a situation where I, my hand was forced to a certain extent because I did reach out to some of the major record labels that they didn't believe in our movement. They felt like, you know, at the time it was... Uh, if I ask what year we talking, so that other bit, they know roughly. Could be rough, it don't need that. Yeah. Time frame. 89. Okay. 89. Then we go. And we were gutter. You know, this shit okay. was, you know, Rod and DMC was, was rocking about Rock the Bell. And we came with some shit like Let a Hole Be a Hole. And you know, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of gutter shit. Big facts. It was in these from the truck, right? It, 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 it wasn't popular to be so gutter with it. You ain't going to talk about Rod and DMC right here. I'm from Miles College. I don't know. We. Listen to me, they they evolved to some of that rock and roll stuff, but their first records wasn't that. So what broke them wasn't that. Yeah. They went out, they started chasing the money, and I get it. Yeah. Shout out Run and Joe, man. Oh, they want no, to understand that Ryan and Jay, I put Ron in his first Rolls Royce, and I bought 
I sold uh, Jam Masters for Rolex. Mm. So no criticism whatsoever. I was inspired. He had a whole Def Jam movement. This was inspirational to me. But I, I got to keep it real. You know what I mean? We was on a different frequency. Yeah. And people yeah. wasn't embracing it. You know, just in New York, we was on different frequencies. Where the way you rapped in Harlem wasn't the way you rapped in Brooklyn. It wasn't the way you rapped in the Bronx. And it wasn't the way you rapped in Queens. So I get it. You all the way over in Houston, yeah. so of course you on your own time and your own way about talking about acting about things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's fire though. Yeah, no, it was a real situation which brought us to the challenges and different things that we had to deal with where business was concerned. You know what I mean? Because majors wasn't trying to embrace us. You know, yeah, Geffen Records who mm -hmm. disowned our whole movement. You know, even though rock and roll artists was kicking the same lyrical content, right? But they didn't want nothing to do with rap a lot in the ghetto boy. In the way they talked, yeah. rapped, yeah, man. And that perception is everything. Yeah. Again, I, again, dude, for me to give you a New York vibe of what we was thinking, when we found out about rap a lot, because we was watching all the labels and everything again. If someone would have asked me back in those days what Jay Prince looked like, I thought you was six four, two fifty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a fact. That's the truth. We be killed social media, right? This is before social media. I didn't know. I just heard things in the way y'all was talking, and man, I, you know, your your mind starts visualizing some, and man, you was a giant. Yeah, you was a giant in my in my, and, and I'm pretty sure everyone else when until they actually seen you, they were like, oh man. Yeah. You know, I talk about that day, that day when I had to come out to the ranch. That's the first day we came in. Yeah. Because that day, I was with Prem. Shout out Prem, you know what I'm saying? And I was with Prem, and uh, we got to go see you about the music and everything. And all I can't remember saying to myself was, this shit is all about this thing. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, when I first met you, yeah. I was like, we come all the way to the ranch. It's a little bit of way to go. Everyone told me, don't go to the ranch, whatever you do. Mm. And I find myself right now come back. <laughs> so I get out there, but that, this is a true story. This is how I felt. And I was with Black. Shout out Black. B1, my nigga. He was like, oh, Black. He was like I can't help you. That's the big homie. I was like, oh, man. So, but when I get there, I'm waiting, and it's got to be about 40, maybe 50 dudes all around the whole ranch. But I'm sitting there waiting, and I'm like, but this nigga, oh, I'm here. Why he got me waiting? He's like, I came a long way. I flew in, and I had to drive all the way. This is exactly what was in my head. No bullshit, no. And and I sat there, and then I said, yo, which one of y'all Jay Prince? And then someone said, I'm going to go get him. And they went and got you. And when I first seen you, my first thought was, I can't believe this shit is all over this thing right here. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. And me and Pre was ready to, whatever it was to transpire without knowing the gentleman again. And I promise you, that's no, I'm not saying that yeah. you handled everything like a gentleman since I ever met you. Yeah. You hold people accountable to words though. Oh yeah. And that's something that I tell everyone. I said, yo, your accountabilities, because you put yourself in those positions. Yeah. No, I definitely believe life and death is in the tongue. You yeah. know what I mean? I believe that it's important for a man's yes to mean yes and his no to mean no. And it's so beautiful that, uh, you know, heart, you know, when a man has a heart in him, you know, size don't matter. You know what I mean? Because the heart makes up all the difference. And, uh, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I'm a man of my word, and it has followed me everywhere I went. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Again, to go back to once you get into the rap a lot, and you what was the first break, to, and that made you say, I could do this? Yeah, you know, the first break, man, actually was coming here. You know, to New York. I came to New York. And big city of dream. Yeah, man. Yeah. But told me to, like, get a close-up with my eyes. You know, what Russell, Leon, all of them was doing at, at the time because, you know, at the time I, I was distracted by a lot of hustle and bustle, you know, in the city. And I had opportunity to travel here. I actually moved my company in Newark. 
Yeah, no, you know, the high you I asked to move them here because, you know, I was I was investing in somebody else's dream and vision. So I'm like, Oh, if y'all wanna go there, okay. Huntington Newark. That's the name of it. Yeah. Huntington. Huntington, yeah. Yeah. So when I came down, I had an opportunity. I'm like, I'm going to New York and sit with Leo and I want to I want to see what was happening. Yeah. And uh it was then I I was exposed to the checks of uh LL Cool J, Houdini, you know what I mean? I saw these checks and I saw these numbers on these checks. The other first time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Huh. Oh, it could happen like this. They made money. Yeah, yeah. They gave checks. Yeah, that's what got my attention. And as I started to move, I, I clearly understood that, you know, the people that were working for me was following the movement of New York. Right. And that's when I made my decision. I say, let's go home. Mm -hmm. I, I uprooted everything against all of them. You know, nobody, you know, believed that was the right thing to do. I'm like, y'all following, you know, New York. That's that's they shit. That's right. I'm like, let's go home and be us. Let's do what we do. And that's when I had to clean the whole slate because nobody, everybody wanted to follow, nobody wanted to lead. And my mindset was, let's be us. Let's not be afraid to be country. Let's not be afraid to let our goals show and talk yeah. our shit and, and speak our lingo. Let's be us. And that was the beginning. That mentality, you know, where I had a clean slate. Imagine, you know, all the artists that was there on the leave and telling me, oh, man, you're too deep. Because that's when I started writing. Right. I didn't know. People don't know that. People don't know that about you. That you actually made records, wrote records. I wrote the shit. I didn't know how to make it rhyme, but I understood that the stories y'all were trying to tell how to live. Whose voice is it that was saying on the album, on the Ghetto Boys album, it said, "Uh, I'm a rebellious nigga. I'm a wiggle my ass." <laughs> That's the one and only Larry. That's the Larry. Yes. I'm shout out Larry, man. I hit them all western on that story. So when you came to New York, do you think some of the business practices you did take back with you? Oh, most the business you did, but you said if I stay here, I'm gonna lose my culture. And what you're saying, my my sound, because you guys had a sound. Yes, yes. yes. I think yes. that was the key, right? You would have lost your sound, and it, I don't think it would have been the label that and the the, the the historic label where it is today. Hey, most definitely. Oh, okay. I give all the prayer, and I tell everybody, you know, because a lot of people are seeing in the vision that's succeed and become jealous of. Mm. I tell them I wasn't jealous of Russell and Leo. I was inspired. You know what I mean? They motivated me. Right. To this day, you know, my respect is there because I know how they stirred my gumbo up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just went, you know what they did for you? Put my own rooting in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I was inspired by those brothers. So forever, you know, I salute them. That's what's up. That's what's up. So once you get the rap a lot music going and everything, and then you start seeing you could be, because I give you the credit for being the best independent label. I don't count uh, uh, Cash Money. I give Cash Money the best regular label ever. And I'm Murder Inc., as you know. And we put our number up. Yeah. Death Row put their number up. Bad Boy put their numbers up. But I get, and even no limit, but I give. Cash Money the best record label for us. Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Ever. But they had to support a universal from the door. Yeah. You on the other hand didn't. And that's why I give you the best independent label ever. And I mean the historical facts of what you posted up and how you did it. Again, because it's not like today where we could use the phone and everyone knows where you at and promote. If you had to promote something, you had to go there. You had to do it. You had to pay that money and get everyone out there. Street team, how big was your street team? Oh man, major. Well, before even touching up on the street team, you know, Cash Money, mm -hmm. uh, No Limit, Tony Draper. Tony Draper, was shout out. Swish your house. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. I don't want to be disrespectful, man. You know, they all big. Yeah, but then with my students. Right. You know what I mean? I inspired them. Yes. You know what I mean? They came out of their own mouths. So, you know, it's almost like Michael Jordan and Kobe. You know what I mean? But for sure, they took things to a different level. And I'm proud of uh, No Limit, Cash Money, Draper Switch House, and all the rest 
down south for doing yeah because you gave him the belief it could inspire them you inspired them. they see again he came and said russell and leo inspired him inspired him. but again you know <laughs> i don't want to get into that but i'll fuck with russell I don't, yeah, but at the end of the day at the end of the day you inspired the rest of them to say, man, if Jay's doing it, I did do it. And that's everything, you know, that's what really what we're here for. Yeah, no, we definitely inspire one another because like you say, along their movement, you couldn't help but to be inspired by them taking things to a, a totally different level. Right. You know, the feeling is mutual. You know what I mean? Ain't no I and we. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what he said, you know, I and we, but there's an I and win. <laughs> and that's Kobe. That's Kobe line. That was a Kobe Bryant line. Shout out, Bean, man. Uh, you know, with with that being said, after you get through through your music and then you start, like, what got you into boxing? Because you people may not understand how much influence you have in boxing. But, yeah. You know, you're probably I was behind. There's just a there's a few names. I don't want to. Promoters are different than managers. Is that? So you probably only have one name that I could think of that I would even put in your category, and that's Al Heyman. Yeah. You know, you know, boxing was always like my first look. Yeah. Some, that's something I wanted to do before the music. Game. Before music. Was you doing it for professionally box or get into the boxing? No, I, no, I wanted to box. Oh, I get it. But it wasn't, it wasn't a, a boxing facility in my community and that's why I built a boxing gym. That's why I built a recreation center in my hood because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have access to that. And I'm like, if I ever make it and get some money, this is gonna be my token where I'm gonna give back. The only problem I've ever had with boxing is I don't mind about problem hitting people in the face. And getting him in the face is a whole deal like for old dude back. That, that's a whole different ball. They take a different animal to accept being in the face. Boxes are like the most unique. I was just with Floyd. Shout out Floyd. Um, he was at the Ernie Elysia joint. I know they interviewed you before too. Shout out Rashad and Troy, those were my boys. And at the end of the day, I was with Floyd. You know, he's always shows nothing but love. I still beating him in dominoes. He know that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he loved the dominoes, right? But at the end of the day, you know, you was the first person to actually bring me to Floyd. Again, people don't know, like, again, Diego Corrales, God bless the dead, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Winky Wright, who was at the ranch that day. I told Winky, he loved <laughs> Yeah, I said, you lucky, boy. You lucky you was there that day there, man. But you know what, um, a lot of people may not know this, um, what caused me to really diversify, you know, I always wanted to get into boxing, but I was under attack by the feds. You know what I mean? They got at me like real tough to the extent where everybody was leaving my building. They was, you know, under a major attack, you know, that was led by this guy, uh, Chad, Chad Scott and Jack Schumacher. And um, it was then. These are two federal agents you don't know. Federal agents. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of them, you know, I put the spotlight on them years ago. One yeah. of them happened to be locked up. They arrested him last year, right. over a decade after I put the spotlight on. But this, this is the point I was making. Uh, it was the attack from them of, of attacking my business and erupting, you know, my daily activity of the things I was doing where I decided to diversify my portfolio and get into boxing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I wanted all of them to know I wasn't one-dimensional. And, you know, when y'all attacking me, stopping me from making a living here, I'm gonna diversify my game. And that's what, you know, took me over to box and built the Rick Ray you, That's a beautiful, that's also cause it was rap, cause it was still really attacking hip hop. You was a mobile coming up with, and, you, and the majority of what income was coming from hip hop, correct? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I always got attacked from rap and hip hop from day one. From day one. You know what I mean? Cause I was like on the island. I was like in Houston, like in New York, y'all had a movement with a lot of rap. Sure, in place. I was on like a private island where, you know, when niggas got together, you classified as a gang. Right. Yeah, just classified as something illegal. Immediately. 
You know, it's funny you it's, it's, it's funny you mentioned it diversifying your portfolio because that's exactly what happened to me. I was ignorant to when the feds came in for us. Yeah. Hey, and Urbans was ignorant too. We both didn't know we was under investigation that we really had to financially pay for lawyers and all of these things and we wasn't charged with a crime. Yeah. So I'm watching a year go by, no money's coming in from music. Yeah. Because they basically made Universal cooperate with them and they stopped all the bread. They, yeah. they moved strategic. Oh, yeah. And then they kept doing it. And I'm sitting there like, no money. And that's actually the same time yeah. with the boxing and got me into boxing and got me into sports management. It got me to, I started doing hedge funds and started doing insurance business yeah. just to diversify my portfolio so it ain't just coming from one and they can't stop it all. Yeah. And it also shows them that. Another thing is we not no dummies. Yeah. You can't just do that. Yeah. And what you're saying is the exact same thing. Whether they want to admit it or not is they fuck proud. But you being able to diversify your portfolio proves that you have one thing, and that's a brain. Yeah. And that's what we did. Like, I did the same thing. I'm like, I'm not just stuck to music. I could yeah. do anything. Exactly. And, and I didn't go to school. I mean, you know, I don't think you did either. Well, I went to high school. Well, high school. <laughs> high school, five years for me in high school. Yeah. Yeah. But the beauty of it is is that, you know, some of the most brilliant, you know, homies and niggas in the world are not college. Bro. That's right. Say, you know what I mean? But the whole unique thing about Murder, Inc. and rap a lot that mm -hmm. I want, you know, the present, the past, and the future to know and this is why they should zero in so strongly to every word you speak. Yes. Because this Thank exact you. movement is taking place all over. Again. It's the same exact attack of racketeering and different things is taking place all over again. And you all have a track record of beating them. Yes. For the very thing that they accuse you of. That's right. You know what I mean? And, and, you, and you beat them and you won them because it was a setup. It's a setup. You know what I mean? It was the devil that was were exercising racism. You know what I mean? That's what I was going to tell you when they yeah. when you talk about rap. They didn't know rap. They didn't understand what we did and how we made money. Yeah. I found that out from all the investigations of my federal agents that was on me. They didn't understand the way we talk. And imagine, yeah. they really don't know how y'all talk. I wouldn't. That's why. One second, De Niro. That's why they have to get someone to infiltrate to explain what we say how we walk, talk, everything. Because they have no clue about our culture. They learn from us. And that if, if if people understood that that's really how they take everybody down is because we working with them to help them learn about us to take us down. Yeah. Because that's what we, I, there's no doubt in my mind back then, in those days, they knew anything about rap music. They didn't understand it. They, when we started, when rap music started, they was like, this shit ain't gonna last. And they threw us penis. Nothing. Now we control the world. Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing is, it was so much deeper, even though rap was the subject at hand, it was so much deeper than rap. It was the same racism that existed before rap. Yeah. That's, that's that we blacks and we nick. Yes. And they want to destroy a movement that's actually real fruit for the day. They saw this day coming. Oh, yeah. Believe it or not. They saw oh, yeah. this thing that's happening coming to fruition and they plan was to stop it. So they want to destroy Murder, Inc. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the devil whole mission. We're going to destroy them. We're going to destroy rap a lot. We're going to destroy death row. We're going to destroy the brains behind the movement because there ain't no movement without the brain. Without the brain. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You go, I'm just going to say something. We mentioned education in that era. I think at the time, I mean, majority of individuals we're speaking about let's say that they're not our skin color. We'll leave it at that, right? Yeah. But you can imagine these people who have gone to schools. We mentioned we only maybe finished high school. Some of us have it. And you're sitting and you're making millions of dollars, right? Legitly. Yeah, we're not. Now we're legit. Now we've crossed over the money from a residual aspect. Where CDs are selling in the stores. You're sitting in your office making money. That has to rub certain people the wrong way. Okay. Because that's actually happening in Dominican Republic right now as we speak with all the... Right when you see the movement, the urban movement in the Sri Lankan countries moving, and at the same time, besides the prejudice behind it, is an economic aspect to it. Because the first thing they did is they hit you where it hurt with the money. So they're saying, wow, not only are they not educated, they can turn that force at all. And with money, it comes not just power, it comes where I can do what I want. And when you understand this 
the true system of you can lower yourself up. See, we can, let's be honest, we know we're, we're straight, we're legit, and we, and we have good lawyers. So it's a different spiel when you understand the laws. And someone like yourself, and I tell Chris, the power thing, you guys, is the power of educate. Yeah. See, before there wasn't social media, and when I watch your social media, and I and I and I see the things you post, and, and also Chris, there's so much education in your words, and I think that's the power. Of, yeah, you know, take the main Mike Lee down here. They fear that. Of course, the fear. Of course, it's, you know, I could sit there and say to the feds when they were on me, they came, they would come to the house, and they would tell me, "You going right in," because they couldn't believe that you making this money, and still fucking with the people from back home. Yes. Yeah. They want you to leave. Oh, yeah. If if. I'm telling you, if y'all understand that is exactly what they want you to do. Get, oh, you good. You going to stay and stand next to Prane? Yeah. You going to stay there with him and you making hundreds of millions of dollars? They couldn't believe it. Yeah. They couldn't believe it. there's no way in the world they could uh, fathom that we wasn't going to roll over and talk to about whatever we have to talk yeah. about, which is nut to, the, to them. And that's what they could not believe. They could not believe that. And that's, I'm sure, it's the same. They looking at how much money you generate. And you like you still in the fifth ward fucking with these motherfuckers? Oh. You must be doing something, bro. Oh yeah. They used to ask me if I'm trying to build a gang, yeah. like, like an army. Cause why you only hire ex cons? I said, why you mad? Yeah. I'm doing something that's great, in my opinion. And they're taking them off the street. I'm giving them, a, I'm giving them a shot, an opportunity, naturally, like to live a real life, pay taxes, and be a legitimate citizen. With, in according to y'all law, and that's what they are. Yeah. And you still mad. It's no winning. You know, you telling the guards on this troop, man, that's what make this conversation so real. Yeah. This ain't no made up shit. No. Just like you, you know, told your uh, side of the truth. I have a side. Right. You know, where they personally came to me and asked me to leave the hood. Why you coming to the hood? I know that without Why you, you know what I mean, dealing with these people. I, my answer to that was, man, I'd rather be dead than mm -hmm. this own the people that the creator that put the spirit in me man to help and and and, and, and i can't uh, turn my back on my people no, you know, that's the my and I. but people that's not from the hood don't understand and don't want to understand that kind because what happens is when one is bright enough and know how to think then he calls others to know how to think that's right and, and all of a sudden we have a movement of thinkers you know what I mean? We have a movement that's taking place of uh, where I pulled truth in a cash money, Tony Draper, Master P, Nob, you know, all these moguls are uh, uh, coming together and there's a movement going on. And that's what's like a fire. You know what? See what you just said? They shine your movement right there. Yeah, so they want to kill that shit before it comes to fruition because they understand uh, because of the people that came before us ignited these movements. So they understand the power of these movements. Right. So they try to destroy that. So when I embrace a Larry Hoover, you know what I mean? Yes, let's get into Larry. Yeah, when I embrace a Larry Hoover, you know, against them telling me, you know, what they threats, oh, if you put this out, this gonna happen, this gonna happen, this gonna happen. And then I said, well, fuck it, let it happen. Because this truth that he done told me, I want all my brothers and sisters to hear this truth. You know what I mean? Some truths, believe it or not, are worth dying for, or whatever the consequences may be. That's the way I feel about it. That's right. And 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 when when you start the liars got underneath. Yeah, but but they don't like niggas that think like that. And all of their life, they wanted to instruct, destroy them kind. That's right. So I understand what come with it. You know what I mean? I understand. I got sit here and when you when you make it, as long as you sell out to them, you didn't control them. When they can't control them, they yeah. have a sit. I understand as I sit here right now, every word coming out of my mouth. Right. I understand that I'm a target. Right. You know what I mean? I understand tomorrow this time. You know what I mean? Uh, the United States versus any motherfucker is in a bad position. It's spooky, but but my my mindset and how I take. If God be for me, who could be against me? So I stand on that. I stand on that no weapon form against me shall prosper from day one all the way up until now. That's right. And whatever, you know, I believe that. Yeah, no more. You live that. Die about it. You live that. You know what I mean? So when one at the end of the day asks, what am I about? That's what I'm about. Right. You know what I mean? All that other shit y'all want to lie about and play with. 
Y'all go ahead and play with that. But on Solid Rock, I stand. <laughs> that, 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 that's what's up. So, again, we, since we brought up Larry, I wanted to ask you about, I know that concert, how did that transpire? How did that come about with Larry Hoover, the concert with Drake yeah. and, and Kanye and that whole that old event there. Yeah, let me let me say this before I even answer any of that. Like, you know, my man Chris right here, like I have turned on interviews with LA Times, you know, Rolling Stone, all of them because, you know, they don't really deserve to have this before. This this is my our Chris, my brother. And Cyril and my friend, right? That's right. So as I sit here today, I understand why I'm sitting here and I understand uh what I'm doing and what I'm saying. And I'm going to answer that question. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That was a vision. That was a a situation where, you know, you know, our brother Larry Hoover. Uh, he was down in the 80X with, with, uh, with Prem. Fred. Prem was first in the 80X. And my action got a little kite back and forth because, you know, 80X, they don't let you. That's my only uh, activity. It was a little message sent back. Yeah, from this, this brother, man, is such a uh, a brother of vision, you know what I mean, until even all the way in there, you know, he sent an idea of, you know, why not, you know, have these brothers to come together because Kanye come from that crop. Yep. A lot of people don't know, you know what I mean? I didn't even know to a certain extent until... He let me know, man, I couldn't have never even been who became who I became if this man don't, you know, put his arm around me through individuals or whatever. That's right. And he was solid enough to not forget about that, you know what I mean? So it was that mindset that, you know, after I got the message that, you know, he envisioned them coming together versus being enemies in front of everybody, you know, I... Uh, I fertilized and watered it. Right. You know, there you go. Know. And then executed the concept, the idea, you know, why don't y'all come together in the face of uh, everybody that think this can't be done. Let's show them it can be done. You know what I mean? To inspire them to where fuse and different shit is concerned in the future, we can deal with it on a whole different page. That was the whole motive and meaning behind that. Man. You know, because I get all, you know, I, I'm i like, everyone, will, when it pertains to you, for some reason, that I get the call from everybody. Yo, what's up with your man? Yo, what's this about? What's that about? I'm like, you know, I'm always backing, you know, I stand on your side all the time. You know that. Me and you will have a call. I'll be like, yo, what's this? What's going on? Is everything good? Just want some check-in. We got, again, check-in time. Like, people talk that check-in. I wanted to talk about the check-in yeah. situation because, in my opinion, I never, I check in all the time, but I don't take it how these people take it. Yeah. Or that, to me, is what you're supposed to do. If I come into your city, another part of the country, and and I'm there, why wouldn't I call a friend and say, yo, I'm here? See, they make it like it's extortion, and I never use that. I never like that check-in. Because I tell everyone I check in there everywhere I go. I just got off tour. Every city I went to, I'm checking in with my own. What's up? I'm here. What we doing tonight? Where we going to eat? What you doing? You got a minute? If not, I'm over here. You know, it, that to me is what checking in is. But they took it and put it in a different place. But what? how do you look at this check-in? Uh, you no. Know, um, they have, like, really fucked their word up. Yeah, they sure do. You know, that's the fact we had to... You sure have yeah, very much spread. Just keep it real. That's a fact. Our understanding of it was wrapped around respect. That's it. Was wrapped around relationship. That's it. You know what I mean? They understanding along with the feds is wrapped around extortion. Right. Wrapped around some other shit that never exists. To me, it's only for the weak. That is the what maybe someone that doesn't have any power or resources or just fear they self. They have no nothing about they self because even a weak person doesn't have to uh, succumb to these things, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone is going to extort you and you was willing to deal with it for whatever your reasons may be, that's on you. That's where the checking came in, but I just don't let it. I never liked the checking side. We have relationships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have relationships. And I wanted to ask you again with these with that check-in because 
there's a, a multiple of things. Again, I appreciate this interview that took place. And part of that was being said to me with checking in. Yeah. And that's with takeoff. Yeah. God bless takeoff. We're saying great. God bless the great artist. You know what I'm saying? And everyone said, if he checked in, how did that happen? Yeah. But I, again, if you don't mind explaining that, if you know what I'm saying, if that makes sense. You know, that's a real sensitive issue. And I hadn't spoke. And you wasn't there. Yeah, no, I wasn't there, but I hadn't even spoken about it publicly at all. But, uh, you know, I'm going to address that tonight. Okay. You know what I mean? And let me just say this. Uh, Quavo and my son are like best friends. Right. They got a real close you talking about jazz? Jazz. Shout out jazz. And you're a close relationship. Yeah. So, you know, all that check-in shit where he concerned, takeoff concern is a lie. None of it ever facts. You know what I mean? They've been there, like, I can't even count on, on my fingers how many times they've been there. And, you know, we embrace them. And when we go to their place, they embrace us. Facts. So there's a mutual situation right there. So as far as... uh. You know, the lies. You know, I call them media whores. Well, there's a lot of media whores out there that, uh, you know, that's what they do. They whore for a living. And you can't be mad at whores that if that's the way they choose to make their money. Yeah. But uh, it's important to uh, not live a lie and embrace a lie. And as far as them checking in or us, us extorting them or any of that kind of shit, it's like a lie from here, man. And my brothers. Yeah, that's family. Yeah. See, I know that. I know say something with the checking in because I think people don't understand. Most people don't travel. They don't understand. Well, they don't leave their block. They don't leave their block. So we have to understand when you go into these cities, I'll give you an example. Let's say you play basketball. You're a college basketball player. You play for University of Miami and you have a game in Cali. You might have a buddy who's in Cali. You call him up. You I'm coming to town. Yeah. I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. That's checking in. Right? If you travel outside, you I'm not gonna go to Dallas or Ohio knowing I have a relationship with you. I'm gonna be in town for three days. And now, Corey, I wanna know what the best restaurants are. I wanna know where the best, who got the best fire. I need to smoke. That's the, ch you ch you're calling your peoples to say, hey, I need you to host me. I'm coming to your town and then vice versa. And when you travel in this business and this hip hop, if you guys don't understand it, you have to hit the road in order to promote your music. And unfortunately, besides the radio stations, you got to hit these clubs. And unfortunately, in this game that we're in, hip hop, there's certain precautions in that you have to take when you're going to certain. That's all we're doing. We're looking out, protect. But it ain't no, it's basically, hey, I'm in your town. You know, that's the one. Well, that friendship, that love, that's what it is. If you don't travel, I think that's where people get it wrong. They don't go anywhere. So they're like, well, well I got to call him whatever time because what do you want to do? You, you want to go see your friend. You want to make sure you're eating, you're, you're connecting, you feel comfortable. Yeah. Like right now, we picked him up. He know he's with you. He's, we're good. That's what we do. Yeah. It's hard to get the regular human person to because of this social media thing, but that's what we're trying to be sure we try to do now. Yeah. We want to clear that up. Not only the social media, you have, you know, the feds, mm -hmm. you need different people that's working in the background, yes. you know, snitches and different things that won't have to be more than what it is. They won't one, you know, paint a portrait as extortion. Right. You know what I mean? Even if one bless somebody for looking out for them, oh, they extorted you, you mm -hmm. gave them that because of extortion. You know, they got a whole different agenda Yeah, that's surrounding our business, you know what I mean, that they're trying to ex yeah. Man, that was, again, that was the basis of everything with us with Prime. They wanted to act like that man was in our pockets, that he was forcing us. I said, man, that man ain't never be nothing but be a gentleman from the day one we met and in a relationship built just like any other relationship from day to day. Event, event, and then the relationship gets stronger and stronger. Yeah. He only helped. You know, it's a hell of a stigma, man, that, you know, a lot of these fears and different things have about people that want to change. You know what I mean? They they want to arrest you for doing a crime, but when you try to change, they still want to arrest you. That's right. You know what I mean? It's almost like a no-win situation. And I witnessed this up close or far, 
They don't want a nigga to change. They don't want, you know what I mean? They want to they want to keep your yeah, they want to keep their feet on your neck until all the air is out of you. It's like George Floyd. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like real shit. That's real shit. You know, and it, it, I hate these talk with, with some of these because it just puts me in a bad place of mindset with everything going on. But I wanted to go back to, aside from the check-in, it was another point that happened that night, you know, that I wanted to ask you about with, uh, I believe it was Junior, they said he walked by. What is that all about? Yeah, you know, one of the biggest lies that was told, you know. I, Shout out Junior, man. Yeah, Jay Press, my son, he come out of his right bag. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, like, <laughs> you know, one of the biggest lies that was told, he walked by, you know, take off body as if he was heartless and didn't care. In in reality, you know, Junior, my cousin Michael Press, that's here with me. Shout out, Mike. You know what I mean? They was there with take off from the beginning to the end. You know what I mean? You know, even when they walked by, the walk by part, it took three seconds of an hour in some situation when Mike and Junior was walking by. He actually went in the restroom to wash blood off his hand where he had reached up on the takeoff. He had to pick him up and, and his fingers went in there. You know, why hot blood well? So he was only going to the restroom to wash the blood off his hand and came right back. But he took a three second piece of light. This is what they do. That's right. That's how they twist everything. Yeah. They took three seconds of a whole situation, man, and told a blatant lie. And the, the truth about it is, you know, you got so many people that's weak minded, you know, today until, un until you know, a lie, you know, is the truth. They embrace a lie like it's the truth. Well, you know, we've seen it in our community now. They always they divide and conquer. Yes. That's the same. So that's really, to me, how they want to position it. They want to put post doubt. They already, again, you've been winning a long time. Yeah. And no one want to see the winner just stay winning. They want a chance at that crown too, bro. That's real. That's real. That's always, I was telling the homies, Christian, it's a, it's, it's a story of, you know, an OG told me. <laughs> yeah. He said, man, he said, you know, people get tired of walking outside, looking up the light pole and seeing a flag every day. They have to look up and see that flag. And he said, that's the way they feel about, you know, a man that's been successful for a long time. They walk out and look up and see his ad. <laughs> they walk up and see his ass. <laughs> so they begin to have a problem with looking up seeing his ass. So I guess they tired of seeing my ass at the table. <laughs> 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 And reality, they should be inspired. Yeah. I, I'm one of them. I come from where they come from. Right. You too can do that. I, I I know the blueprint of, of doing it. No, that's a fact. You know, But, you know, we do have in our communities a lot of crabs in the barrels. Again, this is always, like I told you before, this is for me, black and brown. I always, that's the narrows is Cuban. He does all the Latin side of what I do. And, again, I'm on the black side of what we do. And then we combine because we both need both communities need that help we need to understand these things because if we stick together they in trouble I, there's nothing that we can't hate them. who came up with the name rapper you know because we know the behind how your brother came up with murray yeah i did i mean that i don't think it was asher but i think about that's such a dope rap a lot rap a lot and rap a lot who came up with it? i said yeah I mean, again that's an iconic label yeah who came up with the name yeah well my brother name was sir rap a lot so, so I give him the credit for okay. that concern. You know, I just stole from. You just took off the. I trying to rap. Yeah, that was that was his thing. So oh, that's it, Sir Rapalon. It is. That's dope. That's a, that is a dope name for a, rec, a rap label, like crazy rap a lot. not wreck. All I could ever hear is that one thing, 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 thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's forever. Timeless. Yeah, we did a Tales, we did a Tales movie you had to approve us for. Appreciate that. I know Irv appreciates. Shout out Irv, you Irv. What's up, Irv? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, again, with that, go back and I, I, I still have another line for you for this, this whole situation, this travesty that happened out there. Because, you know, I'm like, I know the family. I know 
I know the nephews. Yeah. I know how tight they are with, with, with everybody they move around with like that. Yeah. Uh, but the world doesn't, and I understand that too. I do, I do understand the world not understanding everything ain't for them. Right. Uh, with that being said, you know, uh, there was a, another little issue with the flowers. Yeah. You know, uh, that was sent out. And how do you, like, who, whose responsibility was that for and what happened with that? Yeah. Well, the flower situation was a, a family plus florist, florist situation where the intent of that was to show respect to their family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we didn't go to the funeral because I didn't want to be a, a distraction yeah. or disrespect anybody it's the spec at a moment like that. So we chose to come up with a creative idea where Houston, H-Town, and the Prince family was extending, you know, a token of respect. To take condolences. But, was, but, the condolences. But, but here's the thing. Yeah, the condolences. When a person is looking for some bullshit, it's, you know, they can find bullshit in Jesus. Yes. And they tell me he was perfect. But, you know, if that's what you're looking for, that's what you're searching for, then you can come up with, different reasons, point of finger and, and, and point of blame or whatnot. But, you know, we know within our heart and the intent of what we done was out of respect. Right. I gained nothing by trying to uh, get any kind of glory off a deceased man. That's right. I, mean, I got more money than I could spend. You know what I mean? I don't I don't need to have that type of publicity to gain anything. Well, that indeed. And plus, I got too much respect for the family, you know what I mean? That just, anybody know me and mine, we ain't about that, That's that right. sucker shit like that. But, you know, by the same token, I understand if one, you know, is looking for something dark, you know what I mean? It's easy to tap in the dark, as it will as the light. Man, I got just, I, I believe I just have one last thing to ask you, maybe two. <laughs> no, but you know, through all of these trials and tribulations, is there ever any way, uh, time in your mind that you say, "I got to do something different"? You know, uh, I always uh, try to uh, diversify and do different things differently. You know, I uh, one of my reasons for getting in the boxing business was to uh, kind of get away from the music business because, you know, I felt like I had devoted, you know, a lot of years where music is concerned. And I understand that the music industry is a tough business. Mm -hmm. So I understand what's going on with that toughness. You know what I mean? So my reason for uh, diversifying in boxing was to have more peace. You know what I mean? To be able to go to a boxing show. Ain't that ironic? You going to boxing for peace. <laughs> One of the most violent sports. In the midst of the song. <laughs> but here's what I understood. I understood that it wasn't no shootouts right. going on in a boxing facility. I understood that it was a disciplined sport. I understood the sacrifices and different things that fighters made to even come to get to that night of, of fighting. Right. No Drake, you know. Oh, probably opposite with the hardest yeah. thing to do. You know, Dylan Price, I was just talking to Dylan Price. This is a young boy, a uh, uh, boxer. And I was just telling him, we was talking about sacrifice. Because when I look at Floyd, if, if any boxers out there, you, he's probably you someone that you should pattern yourself after if you run to take it to the pinnacle and the heights of what he did. And that's something, again, that I was talking to Dylan about. You know, uh, shout out Dylan, you know what I mean? But yeah. young boy coming up, young bull, you know what I mean? And sacrifice, the sacrifices fighters need to make to get to the levels they need to get to uh, is something that, we, again, is very uh, formidable for, for the do. Necessary, absolutely necessary. And it's the same when we talk music, the sacrifice we make is just different in different space, different form. But we make a ton of sacrifice music boxing it doesn't matter what business you're making so you got to sacrifice something that's uh, again to go to my Bible loud 
the narrative you want you want something you have to give something up as the sacrifice the game of rice a little five holes and eight pegs <sighs> what do you need now you That's just can't have oh no ladies oh you want a man with money he will be home at five o'clock with the kids Right, you wouldn't be willing to give up to it, and most of us are not willing to sacrifice. We want to take the, if, if, for, for us to drive, and we drive to Texas about 26, 27 hours, right? Yeah. So let's say the trip in the journey in your life is from New York to Texas. Everyone wants to go to, from New York to Texas in and out. You can't even do it on a plane. Still takes you four years to graduate high school. The most patient one will stay with the entire kingdom. That's, you know, so I think the key to life is that. It's just, I just felt the one way. You know, you brought them down. Sacrificed a lot to be the man. People don't understand what it took or what it takes to be Chris Scotty. Yeah. 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 Everybody wants his story, but it. Oh, Lord. Uh, you know, you told me that, whether you know it or not, Jay, you told me patience. Yeah. Oh. You told me about that from actually when we first was losing our music to this man because we had a producer to him. But when I spoke to him after we got better acquainted and know each other and start building our relationship. I asked him and he said to me, he said it wasn't, I said, why did you come in when you first heard about it? Because I was like, when did you hear about Seven was with Murder Ray? He said, well, I heard about it as soon as he was over there. <laughs> and, I, I, and he waited. Yeah. Seven started making so many hit records. Chess. Check. It's chess, not check. It's, and again, he taught me that. That's something that I really learned. I could say directly from that situation in yourself because you explained it to me to make me really understand why you waited. Yeah. And again, he's like, I seen her. I'm not going to interrupt that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And sure enough, Seven made a lot of hit records. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Jay said, hey, it's time to come in. Yeah. That's mine. <laughs> no, I felt, no, no, it's beautiful. You, you know, all the life is like full of learning experiences, man. And that's why. You know, even as I sit here, I'm so proud of y'all movement y'all got going on right now. Thank Because, you know, I know I don't have to, like, guess or question the sacrifices and the different things I saw you go through. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I trust and know that you ain't no bullshit. That's right. what I mean. This game, this industry is, like, full of, full of the bullshitters, right? And so to be able to tap into the truth and plug into the truth, you know, why not? Man, you see this at the best of times. You see this at the worst of times. We used to be in Vegas with 50, 50 mugs together, everything. You know, know. There, you know, you you might have 60 or 70 with you, and I'm like, damn, he still got me out of nowhere. I got friends with me. Yeah, I want to commend you for something that probably no one is giving you credit for that I've noticed throughout the years, and you say you're an outstanding father. You see that that side of dad, people might not, but I, he's always with his sons. You like, yo, he can't. To me and me, I'm a dad. He knows my on my fourth parent. My family is everything. Yeah, yeah. Nothing goes above the family. Family, health, money's last. I mean, they're always scratch a couple pennies together, and, and take that, it from somebody. And that brings me up. Go ahead, finish it because I got the last one. Okay, this in point. I just wanted to give you your flowers there, precisely, bro. You know, we speak about your son and the positioning he's put himself in the music game, but everyone knows, hey, that's old boy. So, like, so to me, I just wanted to come in to say, yo, I think one of the greatest titles you hold on this planet is his dad. But you know, I want to give you your flowers because I appreciate it. As a man, you're raising men to be men, right? And I'm pretty sure it's not easy being your son. I'll leave it at that, right? Because men are demanding things. You know, as far as the love, the loyalty, the respect, you ain't raising no liars, and we ain't cheating, we ain't stealing. And and I know that I, I demand so much of my kids, yeah. right? Because I realize your kids will never do what you do. They will, on what you say, they will, they're always watching you. Yeah. And they're always going to do. So I just wanted to give you your flowers there. That like, you're an outstanding father. And I'm going to tie it right into, because when you talk about family, we talk about that word that's, the synonymous with you are two words that synonymous with you, which is mob ties. Yeah. See, I know. See, it's like I'm on the inside, so I know, and I have. I want to explore, uh, expose this to the to the people, so they get a better understanding and stop putting such a negative kind of thing to it. But yeah. explain mob ties and how that kind of formulated and what that really means to the Prince family. Yeah. Well, mob ties was created and came to fruition from my son, James Prince Jr. 
Yeah, Junior, what, what people don't understand and what the feds and everybody want to do is make that be something negative as they wanted to make Murder, Inc. be something. Exactly. But that's not our meaning and our purpose. You know, Mob Ties is a movement of bosses. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Together in elevated structure. You know what I mean? We was trying to ignite a movement of mind-like individual entrepreneurs to, to lead. You know what I mean? That's what this is about all around the world. We want it's powerful. Yeah, we want it to tie in to bosses all around the world where we can create our own major. You know what I mean? Where we can unite to do things where we don't have to depend on the majors and different people. Lead us without trying to rob and cheat us. Yeah. Now the thing is, you know, you got you got federal agents that has a whole different agenda. Right. You know what I mean? They like the devil. You know what I mean? And as we work on the light and try to create things of the light, they job is a, you know what I mean, contaminated. Darkness. Darkness. Yeah, real talk. Man, but that's so real because when you, again, now when he put it that way, Murder, Inc., when we told him what Murder, Inc. meant and stuff for, they didn't believe us, they didn't trust us, they, they thought we was lying. They said, oh, you just want to be gay. Because no, Murder, Inc., it was from, uh, Lucky Luciano and all those guys, the Albert Anastasia, the real mafia, and they was all formed together a group called Murder, Inc. Yeah. When Irv seen that, he went crazy because what did that group that formed together do? It's, they made hits. He's a hit man. So it was the play on words. We make hits. Groups out of, every time I tell a story, I get goosebumps because that's how real it is. Yeah. Like Irv went crazy. Yo, that's what we do. We fucking make hits. And that was where the name is. And one of our worst days as a regular label was when we had to drop that word murder. Because yeah. they, Leo or, and Russell and uh, Ben Chavis, they all come and say, you know, we got to do this because the feds, this and that. Because they, it didn't stop nothing. We dropped the word mur murder to just INC, yeah. which is not really, it don't mean nothing. That's why we're still back to murder. Hey, because we did that for the feds and it didn't stop nothing. We still went through old trials. It was like, the fuck y'all care y'all don't care and that's why what you say with the mob ties is so important because they want to switch your real meaning of it and put it to they mean it but they don't know how we talk they don't know how we move and act and how we as men and what it means to us as men how we they just want to put us in a one category and that's it yeah but we're not on the same fraud yeah kill and destroy that's saying the same mission satan got that's it. You know, I got more stories with you, but with, with the feds, because I remember, you know, one of the stories you told me that to me was like, wow, that he was literally on you to take you out. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And you proved it. And that's the beauty of it. You know, you told me that story. Where was you at? You was driving down the road. You said it was pitch black and they in the car. Waiting. They put a hitman on. Yeah, a federal hitman. They had seven or eight bodies that he killed. That's how he is. He's king. One man. Yeah. That's how all his kills is in people that they put on me. So what you think he wanted to do to me? That's right. You know what I mean? So I understand that to be true. And you know, what's so beautiful about it that they mad about even to this day is it came to fruition. Right. The things I said over a decade ago that these guys was crooks and they was trying to do this. They all of a sudden they, they proved it and arrested one of them. You know what I mean? But you think they salute me for that? No, they more mad up. You know, in our case... You know what's the crazy shit is in our case? We had the proof that the agent was lying and everything the judge said. I'm never putting a federal agent on this, on my stand. So it wouldn't let it come in as evidence. Yeah. And we had proof. Shout out Josh Dewan. Ask Josh. He'll tell you. We had proof the agent was lying, everything. I had everything because I had investigators on everybody. Just like you investigated. Yeah, yeah. See, when you got resources, you can do a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I, I I mentioned that for like Gunner and Stunner because they over there dealing with their situation and I'm like, they better put that money to use. Yeah. And that's to get active and be very active in your situation to protect yourself. Yeah, because and, now they're attacking lyrics. Yes. So, you know what I mean? Now lyrics are going to be on trial. Right. Which is, that's out of crowd control. You know, but the movies will be on trial. The lyrics of the movies. That's right. Footage of the movies, they ain't going to put that on. They're actors. So, what you think these rappers are? 
Because <laughs> if that's the case, they should have gave Al Pacino 400 years for 12 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> was the, the influence that movie has had on pop culture, forget about it. But Jay, before we end, I want to just ask you if you have anything else that you might want to put forward to clear any records up or anything like that. Because, you know what I'm saying, if, like I said, I appreciate you giving me the chance to do this in. And I know you haven't done anybody else after all these things. Is there anything that maybe you want to just put on the record and clean up before we get off here? You know what? I say this and, and, and I'll be done with it. But, uh, you know, I um, did this last month or so has been a, a heavy situation. You know what I mean? And it's been more heavy on the family that lost takeoff you know, than anybody. Right. You know, my things is is complaints or whatnot is come after that. You know what I mean? I want to respect that and prioritize that situation like it deserved to be uh, prioritized. But, you know, I just had opportunity to hear some things and witness some things uh, about that situation that I know to be a blatant lie. Right. You know, a lot of times if one don't tell the truth, then a lie become the truth. Mm. So, you know, I will end this by saying that I can't wait and I believe wholeheartedly he gonna tell the truth by everything we spoke about. Quavo, man. Yeah. You know, let me correct that, man. It's uh so important for him to let the people know the truth because, you know, people are lying right now. You know what I mean? They're lying about the whole root of the situation. You know what I mean? Almost, you know, and I'm surprised when I hear a person say, oh, you know, I was protecting takeoff. That's why, you know what I mean, I've done what I've done on those individuals. What no protecting takeoff. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's keep this real. You know what I mean? You were wrong about what you've done. Use the root of being wrong that caused all of that to happen to take off. You know what I mean? And Quavo know this. You know what I mean? So, you know, my prayer is that the truth come out and they tell the truth. Right. You know what I mean? At least where Quavo is concerned. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I love that brother. I love all of them. You know what I mean? Until they show me something different. But, you know, these lies that this individual that was the root mm -hmm. of all of this happening, we, you know, we can't protect that lie. That's right. You know what I mean? That dude done what he done, and that's the root of everything happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm done. Okay. Man, this is a rap a lot exclusive. <laughs> Man, I want to again thank you for coming and being on, giving them the business. This is Chris Gotti Lorenzo, my partner Don De Niro. Mr. Money for the Gringo. And we out, yo. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Give them the business, and we keep bringing these good shit to you. Check the gate. Peace. <laughs>